Okay, so I thought maybe people could be interested in the what kind of boats I ride myself. So this is the standard uh, flywave. I don't ride it so often. So this is the. It has a pretty fast rocker, but still uh, still turny, and a V with a double in it. Uh, so this is the 78. Uh, I rarely ride boards this big. Uh, and not in this shape. So uh, this one I used for, uh, I was in Cabo Verde. So then I wanted something closer. I have been the designer of the Zimmer windsurfing boards for like uh, 12 years or something now. Uh, so I have of course a lot of people testing my boards, uh, whether they are customs or uh, production boards. Uh, but I also do a lot of development myself and, and uh, I really value the, the critique and the feedback you get from uh, friends you say with yourself. So, so this is uh, my local spot, uh, let's say, and Mikke, my, my kind of best saving friend. Uh, it's kind of interesting, he, ri he writes the fly here, because, uh, I mean, we kind of say, in a way, it's the same spot and we say kind of similar, yet there are some important differences between how we sail and I know exactly how he sails because I see him sail so often. So so that's quite important because when he gives me feedback I, I kind of know exactly where it comes from and so on and that's really important feedback to get. And also for yourself, I mean, I go to other spots, you know, other places in the world and so on, uh, but it's uh, still when you sail your local spot you know the waves so well so it's it's actually the best to feel the board when you're, when you're uh, like on your home ground. So, but my own boards are pretty strange, really. So uh, let's see the green one. So this is like a it's like a fish design. So, so I I always uh, have a really short tail. I like to think about the. I don't think about the strap being far back, I think about the tail being short so, because I always have the same kind of stance and uh, kind of a short distance between the, uh, the mast track and the, the uh, front uh, straps. So this one, this has the same rocker as the fly generally uh, in the center uh, as the fly uh, 72 actually. Um, so this is like a 79. So it's 209 times 28. Um, but I have a slightly more in my program that I use when I design the boards. I can design kind of this curve, the rocker here, the rocker here, and the rocker here separately. So, so what I did on this one this is what that I increased the rocker a little bit here. So it has a little bit more, more rocker when it's on rail. And that also extends the V a little bit towards the tail. But then there's also, you can always see that it's a deeper concave here. So with this board with a short tail, sometimes they can uh, lose um, uh, grip in the top. So this uh, sort of tunnel concave that runs pretty deep all the way to here, it, it makes the board stick in the top turn a little bit better. So it holds the, uh, the rail a little bit better. So this one I use, now. I don't have any fins, but uh, this one is really versatile. It doesn't really go so well as a standard quad. So I use it as a twin, the old style twin, with the two uh, 16 or 15. Uh, I use it, we can look at the other one, with uh, like a surf style twin. So I have that like two MR fins, so kind of big uh, classic surf fins here, and the little center. And sometimes I use it as a standard thruster setup also, like I have on, on one of the others. All my surf fins. This is I only use this kind of fins uh, as fronts. These are FCS set FG3 with an inside foil. You see, it's the same uh, kind of towing in the in the box. PG3. Uh, this is uh, a reactor set. So what I do typically for most of my boards, I kind of mold the fins a little bit deeper so they become slightly smaller than a standard surf size but here you see I sort of used the standard surf size the, the size 3 
but like this, so you have a little bit of, of splay in them. I, I like that. What it does is that it, I mean, actually both toe in and splay uh, delay a little bit the engagement of the fin, so you need a little bit more uh, uh, more rail to, for the fin to engage. So this makes the whole setup more forgiving. So I kind of tune my fins to to uh, to work exactly how I like to turn. Uh, so so I mean a typical setup then might be this is kind of extreme. I used this today. It was onshore, kind of hard to sail. Um, so this setup, which is kind of similar to the twin setup on the other board uh, it makes you it it uh, makes the turn more locked in so you can go tighter on the wave but it's also kind of hard because you need to really surf the board you can't really just bank it over and, and expect it to turn you really just surf it with both your feet to sort of because you have much much more drive in this fin so it's easy easy to go wrong but sometimes it's just uh, very nice the first prototype of this one ha had a winger also, and uh, kind of let the production fly, but this one doesn't. And, and uh, this, this has a really straight curve here, so it's kind of fast in the turn, uh, uh, like a surfboard winger uh, board. So this is, uh, I, uh, yeah, as I said, it, it comes from the seaside, this has kind of same, I was inspired by, this, by, the, by the seaside, the Machado board. So, but, but compared to the earlier prototype, I still gave it a little bit more curve here. So as soon as you give an outline curve, you're going to have looseness as, as, and straightness gives kind of grip and stability. So if you want a board that, that really is easy to, to uh, uh, not spin out on on the top and so, it's better with a bit of a uh, straightness. But if you want it really loose so that you easily can come around in any sort of turning radius you want to have, then it's better with a little bit of a curve. So the whole design of the outline is to distribute where do you want this curve to be uh, so that's the whole point so it's kind of the board I use for light wind and small waves and so yeah, kind of wide and turning the green board it's called the torrent after torrent Martin the twin fin surfer in the similar lineup it's actually most similar to the Quantex uh, this is the Quantex 79 you see me see a sail here uh, but it has a much shorter nose. It's because I always like to kind of come around really tightly on the wave. So I like short, short noses. So this one is kind of my other standard board. I used that one today. Uh, so you see it's kind of scratched up. I, I think I had it for four years. Uh, so I painted it myself so it's not so nice maybe. Uh, it was inspired from the one of the Slater design boards with this uh, kind of winger shaped tail and, and this and a, a really short nose so this one is uh, 207 so the actual outline is kind of really stretched and kind of straight up here so you can get a lot of rail uh, despite the board being kind of short uh, otherwise it's just a super soft uh, a lot of rockier here really really high rocker board not so much in the tail and it is a double in a single and uh, this one I use uh, mostly with this kind of setup or a quad setup so I, I use FCS front fins that I kind of mold into the box now they are a bit scratched up because I hit some rocks uh, and uh, either this one the 15 uh, they all the black tip or I have two like 12 uh, that are special made that I use. So, so I use the same fronts so um, and what happens then so uh, with uh, this one in the middle you get a little bit more drive so when you when you uh, go down the wave and push you you get more forward uh, action let's say and sometimes you can get a little bit more grippier turns also in the top turn with a quad it likes to be more on rail so if it's uh, uh, a wave that where I need to go really really deep to come back uh, then I uh, close to the to the wave uh, then I usually use the quad and if I need some you know projection I usually use the, uh, the truss so this is a kind of special board it's, it's designed from a Actually, the outline is kind of like a ghost to the, the surfboard myself. Uh, so it has a round tail. I, I 
used a few round tails over the years. It, it's really nice because it comes around uh, super easy. It's just, uh, you know, you have to have the right setup to, to get it to grip uh, nicely and so on. Uh, but uh, yeah, so kind of nice sometimes. Which I actually designed a few years ago when I was going to Cape Verde. Uh, it worked well there and in some clean conditions, but it's too too much curve here and too little area here. So so it, it's really sensitive in choppy conditions. I mean, on a windsurfing compared to a, to a surfer, you have the sail, so you, you actually push quite a bit with the sail, uh, so you get a lot of rail. So you, you need, need to have a little, I discovered by doing this experiment, you need to have a little bit more more outline here or more width here for it to work. But it's nice sometimes, still. So I, I want to make a new one with the same tail but slightly shift the, the outline curve. So I, I will have a little bit less curve here. And if you have curve is how much it bends. So if you have less curve here, it's going to automatically kind of straighten out a little bit. And then you have to add a little bit more uh, curving in the nose. So this one I, I can almost not show it because it's really ugly. <laughs> But uh, it's a reshaped old board. This, this, is, this one is 66, 55.5 width. And this one is 55 wide and it's uh, 66. What was that? 73 was that the other one. And 208. So this is a reshaped old board that I wanted to try out as a, like a surf style twin. So this is the standard M MR, maybe the most well known twin fins for surfboards. And I run a little stubby in the back. Um, so and this one is also inspired by some surfboard designs. Uh, and I wanted to sort of get the most amount of fin drive possible uh, with the least amount of kind of tail drive. So I took away, so this tail actually, after the winger, it goes inside. So it becomes really small. So you have a really, uh, not, not a lot of, uh, power from the tail so I, I will I want to generate all the power from the fin on this one if you compare to this one it looks kind of similar but actually this one runs a lot straighter so you get a lot more power from the tail on this one so this I removed otherwise it's kind of the same rocker and the same uh, same uh, bottom more or less it's interesting to compare those two with the wingers because if we look from the front here you see how much the, behind the winger, how much the tail actually is uh, pulled together. So, so it's a relatively straight curve, but it's pulled in relative how the outline kind of enters, uh, how it, the, the direction of the outline before the winger, it's kind of pulled in. The other one is also pu pulled in, this one, a little bit, but not as much. So here, so that this kind of line is not so far from what it comes in with here uh, so and it's straight the straightness it, it's gonna make uh, it's gonna give grip and the more you pull it in the more uh, loose it's gonna be let's see let's say so this one uh, can it can also be sailed as a tr standard thruster but um, the point of this is sometimes if it's a little bit onshore or low power uh, th then you can use this uh, you get a lot of engagement on the fin, so you can cut uh, really tight on the wave and go really tight. And also, if you come up a little bit more, like shallow in the in the bottom uh, in the top turn, usually you can skip out. But then, if you manage to just set this uh, large fin, you can get a really nice hook with the uh, uh, with the fins. But it's it's very hard to say if it's uh, super powered up or choppy. Then it's too much. So this is kind of experimental. So so I mostly ride these kind of experimental boards, and I kind of made them to fit the way I sail, so that's kind of a luxury.